Welcome to Class of Firearms, guys. Kyle over here, and we've got Josh from US Arms Co. Good to be here, man. Welcome, dude. Yep, Glad it's good having to see you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so you're probably wondering who's this guy? And I'll tell you this he's not just a handsome guy, he's much more than that. So, with that being said, Josh, why don't you tell us about yourself? Um, so, I um, uh, work for US Arms Co. And uh, a little bit of background about myself I've 13 years in law enforcement, 17 years in the Army. Uh, in that time, I've, I've been fortunate enough to uh, be a graduate of, of a couple of sniper schools and, and even had the chance to be um, an instructor at the, at the sniper schoolhouse. So I've learned a little bit over the years and with all of that experience, bringing it back to U.S. Arms Co. has been, uh, has been very helpful in pushing the product to like the next level of accuracy. That is awesome. So obviously you know what you're doing when it comes to long range shooting, sniping, right? So we've actually spent a couple of days with Josh, US Arms School folks over here, phenomenal products. And while we had a mind like, a, you know, an experience like Josh over here, we're like, you know what? A lot of people want to know what makes a good AR-15 a long range AR-15, or what makes an AR-15 a long-range AR-15? Because a lot of times, and I was one of those guys too, like AR-15 is really good for um, kind of closer to intermediate range engagements, you know, right. obviously the caliber has a lot to do with it as well, but just by design, this thing is pretty good, what, 400 meters pretty good? Yeah. 500 meters, what? So, well, the, well, the Army standard's 300 meters. Okay, 300 meters, yeah, yeah. You, qual you qualify up to 300 meters, right? right? And when I was in law enforcement, I know you were too, we were issued something just like this. In this case, I got the Colt. Patrol rifle. Yep. yep, law enforcement only, it says right there. Yeah. Colt law enforcement carbine. And this is straight from Canada. I didn't know they had cops or military, but apparently they do. Oh yeah. Um, so I was qualified, I qualified up to 100 meters, but zero to 50, and that was my, that was it. That was I, it, yeah. Anything more than that, I was like, you know what, I think I needed a bolt gun or something different. Right. But, you at US Arms Co., and I know there's other brands out there, are doing some really cool things making an AR-15 super efficient and accurate, um, some s serious ranges. Right. So what, what do you guys do to make them uh, that efficient? So we, we took a look at the AR-15 platform when we, when we started on the Utah series, and we said, hey, look, you know, for all of our experience in, in you know, shooting competitively, uh, some of our gunsmith backgrounds, like, well, well, how do we make this better? One of them was just better components. Um, you look at a, a lot of the AR-15s on the market, they're forgings, they're, they're, they're cut from forgings. We go out of 7075 billet for the upper and lower receiver, which is super strong. And you get integrity throughout that, that block of aluminum, aircraft grade aluminum. And it's just it, the, the integrity of it, the strength of it is, is bar none better than a forging. Mm -hmm. um, and so, on this champion here that we see in front of us, we use a 416R match grade stainless barrel. We're using a uh, SLR titanium adjustable gas block with a melanite gas tube. Trigger tech trigger set at three and a half pounds. I mean, there's a lot of things, but as far as the in, uh, inherent accuracy of it, we always make sure that the face of the upper receiver is square, perfectly square, mm -hmm. so that the barrel extension when it locks up with it is, is square on all sides, and we torque our barrel nut to 100 foot pounds. 100 foot pounds. 100 foot pounds. What is the industry standard on that one? Any standard is somewhere around 35 to 42. Yeah. Okay, so there's so a like significant right difference. Here. Yeah. So this should be about 35 to 40 foot pounds of torque. Foot pounds of torque, yep. And you got 100. And we run 100 because the entire system is free floated. Okay. So everything from the handguard, from about right here on the rifle all the way forward, nothing else is engaging the handguard. So the barrel is suspended, mm -hmm. the entire gas system is suspended. Even We even ensure that the gas tube floats in the, the gas tube hole in the upper gotcha. receiver, that it's not contacting one side or the other. So that when the barrel is fired, it's allowed to whip and move on its own freedom. Gotcha. So that obviously, what you just said, helps with accuracy. Accuracy. Because if, if, we, if we induce the same harmonic whip every time in the barrel and the barrel is at the barrel the chamber or uniform and match grade we will produce smaller groups every time gotcha so of course the less movements you have the tighter everything is yep. the more accurate you're going to be right yep. and granted it, you use the right ammunition you, and, yeah. right ammunition you know you've got the parallax yeah. audio scope all these other little things that, yeah. that they quantify into big things but 
Uh, e even on down to the lower receiver, mm -hmm. like I, even our standard receiver is a tighter fit than any other upper lower receiver on the market. As is, because I know you've got that cam lock system, which I'd like you to talk about, but yep. even without it, as is, you have it. As is, like, so our our uh, service rifle line that, that we build 20 mm -hmm. inch, uh, they're on standard receivers and they are, you can't move them. Okay. So they there's there's no movement in between the upper and lower receiver, and somebody would ask why. Well, why does that matter? Yeah. Well, when we take a look at like this rifle right here, we've got a lot of play. Wow, in, that is a lot of play. It is a lot of play, and the oh, industry yeah. standard is around eight thousandths of an inch, and so in between the the pivot pin and the takedown pin, which is six inch, two hundred and fifty thousand center to center, if we quantify eight thousandths of an inch, that's that's three point eight minutes of angle of inherent accuracy that could could be induced on the shot. What's the industry standard? It's it's around eight thousandths of an inch of play. So that that back and forth, yeah. you've got four thousandths one way, four thousandths another. And yours is what's your standard? Zero. For the cam lock, it's going to yeah. be zero. But for our standard, it's it's around one to two. Okay, right, let, let me try this real quick. So this has got the cam lock system. And speaking of the cam lock system, this is to keep upper. It pulls. It pulls the lower upper and lower to together. together, right? Yeah, it's, it's so. the complete opposite of an AccuWedge. Okay. So we've got just a little bit of play in there. You'll feel just a little bit. Yeah, just ever so slightly. Ever so slightly, which is that's yeah. that's where our our standard upper and lower receiver fitment's yep. going to be. And, and then, then when you pull the the cam lock, when you re-engage it, it pulls that upper yeah. down there to is the lower. Nothing. And so between the two flats and the radius here on the back of the receiver, yeah. it engages all of them together. So it's essentially a mechanical betting job. Like you would, if you were gonna bet a bolt action rifle yeah. in Marine Techs or something like that, you're doing the same thing, but mechanically. Okay, see, so here's what I wanna do. This is very, uh, this is great. It doesn't move at all. It is compared, cool. to, compared to this, this moves a lot. Right. I'm gonna look at some of other known brands that we have over here. I've got, oh, the FN that we always keep around here. Yep. Yeah, the FN M16 over here. This is what military uses. Yeah, uh, pretty close to uh, it. Yep, yeah. issues are pretty much the same thing if it was just, if it had the giggle switch. Yeah, if it was right. a, a, yeah, well, there's, yeah, <laughs> if, yeah, if it had the, had the, had the full fun, fun switch on it. But, uh, and typically what, what most of them are using now still is the Colt. Um, but F, FN, you know, everybody's always SIG, all those guys are still jockeying for a position, but you can still feel like it's, you can even it's, see it. It's not, like, I, you can definitely see it. It's not as bad as this Colt Law Enforcement one. Yep. And but you can hear it, you oh, can Oh, it's move definitely it. here. And I've got ADM over here. This is one of my favorites over here that I used for a while. Just a awesome little yep. thing, but. And yeah, ever so, ever slightly, so slightly this one it. too. I yeah. mean, an ADM, and this is a, a nice, good quality rifle. Yep. And, and I want to I want to quantify that a little yeah. bit. So if if you think about like when we talk about inherent accuracy, so there's accuracy and precision, and in shooting small groups where we want them, we have to be precise and accurate. Well, if if I'm allowing this this gun to cant, yeah. like if I if I don't level the gun up every time, I can pitch or yaw my shot left or right. Okay, so if, the, if, if, I, if I break a shot and let's say one round was a little bit higher pressure and it, it engaged the lands yeah. and grooves and it caused this upper receiver to torque, yeah. all right, if it's not buried against that lower receiver and it is allowed to oh. move, now you've changed the pitch of the upper receiver. That's right. You were, all right. And so you can, you, you can fire this nice tight group and all of a sudden you've got a flyer and you don't understand why. It's like, I've got a match grade barrel and I've done all this. Well, maybe that That's round right. was a little bit higher and it engaged and caused some torque. And now, because you had that play, you, you allowed it to move from the foundation to which you were firing. Wow, that is really impressive information, man. It definitely makes perfect sense, as you say, too. Yep. So what else do we need on an AR-15 uh, to make it really Super accurate. Range? Yeah. All right, obviously, you can take a look. There's M-lock rails on the handguard. Right here, we have a, a Magpul bipod. So shooting in the prone position, the ability to have a bipod is really nice. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that we afford the M-lock rails, the slots that if guys want to mount a bipod, yeah. they can. Uh, one of the cool things about the Champion that we we were like, hey, look, this is going to be our top of the line. Yeah. It's going to be a half minute or better rifle. So the, one of the other things that we do is that the this particular champion right here and all champions that we produce, the chamber is cut to that specific bolt. 
So it's a matching bolt. So like if you went to Krieger and bought a matching bolt set, that's essentially what you're getting here. The difference is, and one of the other things of care that we, we uh, try to do is that mm -hmm. the barrel extension will always match the grade of the bolt. So if you have a nickel boron coated barrel extension for like this model mm -hmm. here, the bolt is going to be nickel boron coated for even wear. So even all the gotcha. way down to the longevity of the yeah. uh, of the rifle and the accuracy of the weapon system are all have all been thought about and and placed into that weapon. Phenomenal. So what I'm basically understanding is, and I understand it's common sense, but I it, when it comes down to such small margins, I guess a lot of people don't think about it, myself included. What it comes down to making everything really, really, really tight, as tight as possible, with very, very minute tolerances if any at all, yep. to basically make yourself a really accurate uh, long range AR-15. And that's what we look at, yeah. so, so lightweight, accurate, durable. That's okay. that's our motto. Because somebody may buy, like we had the ADM over here, right? ADM right. is, as I said, it's an awesome rifle. Yeah. And when I grab it, I'm like, man, this feels, this is tight, this is good to go. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, put a glass on it, put, I don't know, a muzzle device on it, and bipod, let me engage some 500 yards. Exactly. Not saying you can't do it, but as I now try it, there's ever so little play here, and there may be some play in other areas that I can't tell. How do you measure that? Like, how do I find out? If I got an AR at home, and I want to do some long range shooting with it, like, how do I find out that mine has very little to no play? Is there a measurement? Oh, uh, you'll just feel it. You know, if, yeah. if you're able to, to rattle it back and yeah. forth, obviously it's got play. Um, you know, it's, it's just something that we took a look at, and we knew that it would make the rifle better, so. You know, even our standards have very, very little play. So, okay, I've got a rifle at home and I spent so much money, made the yep. barrel and everything, but my lower has a little play. Obviously, I don't have the cam lock system. Yep. What do I do? So, if you're in that scenario, what I would do is make sure that you load the rifle the same every time. Make sure that the torque on the gun, when, when you get into your position to fire, um, I would probably even load the rifle. So, like for this rifle yeah. right here, if, if you're going to shoot and this thing has play, yep. load it the same way every time so that you have contact, um, good bearing contact on that and then I see what you're saying. So basically just load it and hold it tight yep. so it doesn't move at all yep. and so just it, take your shot. Yep. yep, so just kind of push yep. them together to one side and something to note also is that our lower receiver fits any upper receiver on the market. We also offer builder sets. So if you're like, hey, you know, I, I like you guys, but I'm kind of a stickler for this barrel yeah. company or, or this bolt carrier group, yada, 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 that's fine. We understand that too. We do offer a full builder set. So you'd get the upper receiver, lower receiver, handguard, barrel nut, and gotcha. um, they either come with or without a break and the trigger guard. So if, if you like, if you say, hey, I like the I like the setup, but I'm, I'm kind of peculiar. I want this, that's fine too. We, we offer multiple different avenues to building a precision gun. Gotcha. All right, folks, you heard it from the man who knows what he's talking about. He's, he's a little humble, but trust me, he's, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, if you want an AR-15 that is really accurate, long range, we're not talking about ammo over here. That's a completely separate topic. It just basically needs to be really super tight and good grab, chamber, yeah, good, good barrel, chamber, good everything. components. Just really neat, tight, and uh, then you'll have yourself a really nice AR-15 that will actually uh, shoot long range. And this one, yep. you said, what was your engagement on this one? So uh, we've, we've fired this 16-inch model out to 1220, um, and we've hit three and four out of five on an IPSC. Yeah, think about it. 1220 so. on an AR-15, I wouldn't even... And we offer this in a 20-inch yeah. also, but this just we just wanted to the see, like, hey, well, you yeah. know, what, what can we do? Exactly. So. No, phenomenal. Josh, really appreciate your time, man. Right. Very valuable Thanks, information. Buddy. Yeah, man. Folks, definitely check out US Arm Scope. They are they're just phenomenal. They know what they're talking about. But in this case, we just wanted to show you guys different models and US Arm Scopes, what they got over here, and talk about a good AR-15 lot what makes an AR-15 a long-range AR-15. Absolutely. So, thanks a lot, and go to cfcontest.com. cfcontest.com, good things happen there. You may see some cool things there. Well, you probably will 100% see some cool things there. Again, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your business, and until next video, God bless. Take care of yourself.